Hello there. In today's video I am going to be making a traditional bow. To begin with you've got to find a good piece of wood. Because of the borers there's a lot of guilt-free ash wood lying around so I'm going to be using that. I've been drying these split pieces for over a year. You want a piece with fairly straight grain and with little to no knots. You can work around these but it makes things more difficult. The first thing to do is to cut off any cracked sections near the ends. You also want to cut off any knots near the ends, as these are harder to work around. Once that's done, you want to square up the trunk into more of a board. You should do this with an axe, it makes things fast. Don't use a table saw, as a table saw will cut through the grain rather than with it. You also don't want to get carried away and remove too much. You want the board to be sort of 2x4 dimensions. You want to shape the board so that the flat side corresponds with the outside of the tree. Once you've roughed it out with the axe, you're going to clean it up with a draw knife. You should just lean it up against a tree or against a wall for this, you don't need to bother with a clamp. You're just trying to flatten it out a little bit and clean up the torn fibers left by the axe. You're also only cleaning up the front and the back, you don't want to touch the sides. If you have a planer, you can do a little bit of the work on that, but you don't want to do too much as the planer doesn't fall to the grain too well. It's also not much fun, but it's fast. The pattern I'm going to be using today is a fairly standard pattern that was used right the way across the continent. It's a really simple algorithm that can be adapted to nearly every piece of wood. First thing to do is measure out the piece to your desired length. 66 and a half. Then you mark the halfway point for the handle. 33 and a quarter. And then the quarter point for where the taper should start. 16 and three quarters. Then you place your hand on the center line of the bow and mark it for the handle. Then you add a little bit on top of that for the arrow to rest. If you've got big hands, you can just make the top and bottom of the handle equal. Then you measure the width of the bow at the top and the bottom of the handle. You're going to want the two of these to be more or less the same, so if they aren't, you should mark them to the lesser. Three and a half. Then you mark the center line of the handle. Three and a half. One and three quarters. Then you go to the tip, measure the width, and mark the center up there as well. Once that's done, you get a chalk line or a straight piece of wood, and you try and line up all of those center points. Unless you're very lucky, you won't be able to get these to line up perfectly, so just choose the best compromise you can. It should be correct near the center of the handle, at least. Once you've found something you're not unhappy with, mark it. And be sure to put a little X near it to make sure that you don't forget which mark is which. Now it's time to draw the pattern properly. Take a ruler and mark from the corner of your handle mark to the edge of your quarter way mark. Ideally, this should be more or less the same width, but if it's a little bit less, that's no big problem. The width of this bow staff at the quarter way mark was about a half an inch narrower than it was at the handle. Simply by virtue of working with natural material, you're never going to have anything perfect. The only thing you don't want is for the quarter way to be wider than the handle. That's just unacceptable. Now you want to go to the tips of the bow. You want the tips to be half the width of the handle, but you also want to maintain the center. If there's not enough material to make half the width of the handle, it's okay, you can get away with a little bit less. Now you take the ruler again and you join those new marks to the quarter way marks. All going well, you should now have the outline of your bow marked on the staff. Now you should clamp the bow in a standard vise and start scraping away with your draw knife. You want to take it down so that the line is just barely visible with nothing on the other side of it. You also don't want there to be an obvious corner when the taper begins. You should just round that off just a little bit. Once you've shaped the rough outline, it's time to work on the handle a little bit more. I'm using a 2x4 cutoff to mark the width, but anything will do. You just gotta find something that's comfortable. You want the handle to be slightly larger than comfortable to begin with. It's easy to make it smaller, it's hard to make it bigger. 
Now I'm making a single cut down the center to the desired width of the handle. And then I carve out the pieces with a chisel. I like the chisel a lot for this task as it not only works quickly but it gives nice rounded shoulders for the handle. Carving a bow handle with a draw knife is a real pain. I always tend to go too far and end up cutting into the other side of the handle and then too far on the way back trying to fix it. Once you've got all those pieces cut away, the rasp is a really good tool for roughing out the handle. You want to use the flat of the rasp when working on the handle proper. You want to use the rounded section when working on the shoulders. Here's the bow staff once all the rough work has been done. It's starting to look like something. On to the next step of thinning things out. I've got the bow clamped to my workbench with the edge just hanging over. This is a good sturdy setup for heavy shaping. The first side you're going to work on is the outside of the bow where the sapwood is. The goal here is to get the front of the bow down to all the same layer of grain. You want to see lots of parallel lines and not many perpendicular lines. The front of the bow has to stretch a lot and every point that the grain runs out is a potential weakness where the bow could tear if drawn too far. I'd like to take this point to talk about bow length. I tend to make my bows about as long as the piece of wood will allow. Longer bows are just generally better than shorter bows. They're more durable because they have less strain on them overall, and they're more efficient because they have a longer draw length. The only drawback is convenience of carry, but in my experience, so long as the bow isn't taller than you, it's not going to get in the way much. Once you've got the front finished, you're going to turn it over and start thinning out the bow properly. You want to work the whole thing down to about the width of your thumb, maybe a little less. You also want the tip to be the thickest point aside from the handle. A technique that's useful for removing a lot of material quickly is to take off the corners first so that you've got less surface area when you're working along the flat. As I've mentioned, you should try and follow the grain wherever possible. If the grain is a little bit wavy, the bow should also be a little bit wavy. This piece of wood has got a couple of small knots in it. I'm not going to be able to work them cleanly with the draw knife, so I'm going to take them down with the rasp. Fortunately, they don't go out the other side, so it should be alright. I want to talk briefly about flat bows compared to D-section bows that you might be familiar with. D-section bows, like a medieval longbow, are more efficient, making them more powerful for their draw weight, but flat bows are a lot more durable, making them last longer and giving you a lot more margin for error when making them. The thicker the bow, the further the surface layer has to stretch and the more likely it is to tear. Now that I've got the bow roughly thinned out, I'm just going to clean up the corners leading to the handle. Now that it's thinned, we're going to cut a little notch to hold the bowstring. Start things off with the saw, then chisel. And now shape the notch properly with the rasp. This is slightly finicky work and I'm not really sure how to do it properly. If you don't make it deep enough, the bowstring might slide off when you're shooting. But if you make it too deep, the whole tip of your bow might snap off. Not to worry though, if you make it too shallow, you can always make it deeper. If you make it too deep, you're only going to lose about a half inch of the bow length. One thing I can say is that you want to make it nice and smooth with no sharp corners in the groove so that your bowstring won't wear down as you're shooting. So here's the bow in a slightly more finished state. It's looking a heck of a lot like a bow. On to the most important step. This step is called tillering. Here you're making sure that the bow flexes properly. What you do is you clamp it in a vise, you string it with a very loose string, and then you bend the limbs just slightly. You're looking out for any flat sections where the limbs aren't bending. Just scribble over them with a sharpie or a piece of charcoal. After that, you go clamp it down and you scrape it off. You don't want to remove very much material here. You basically just want to remove the ink. The distance between perfect and too far is very small. First bow I made, I kept overcompensating for the stiff sections. Oh, it's bending too little. Oh, now it's bending way too much. All you want to do is scrape off the ink and then take it back. Take it slow, do it right. A well-tillered bow will shoot efficiently and it'll last a really long time. A poorly tillered bow will break instantly. This is the skill that separates the masters from the amateurs like me. I have a really hard time even seeing the flat sections. You want the limbs to bend evenly so that not too much strain is put on any given spot. 
The growth of the wood is what makes this step necessary. You can't just scrape it down to an even thickness and expect it to bend properly. Trees naturally grow with stiff sections and soft sections and warped grain and straight grain and knots and scars and all sorts. On the subject of knots, these are a particular problem when tillering. A section that has a knot simply won't bend properly. If you make it thin enough to bend evenly with the rest of the bow, it will be a major weak spot and that will be where it snaps. Any sections with knots are just going to have to be left slightly stiff and the rest of the limb is going to have to compensate for it. Tillering is the step where you work the bow down to the intended draw weight. You just keep improving it and improving it and improving it until you've finally had enough. In addition to making sure that the limbs bend evenly, you also have to make sure that the two limbs bend to the same degree. 27. You don't want one limb to be taking more strain than the other. 27, 25, that sounds inch and a quarter going down. To do this, I clamp the bow in the vise and have one end going over a ruler. I draw the bow with a block of wood to make sure that it's drawn to the same level every time. 27 and 3 quarters. 26 and a half, so yeah, it's about the same. Again, you don't have to do this perfectly, but the better you do, the better your bow will be. Once your bow is tillered, it's time to finish it off. I'm just using a spoke shave to take off all the corners. Now I'm using a pocket knife like a cabinet scraper to just finish carving the handle and to carve away any rough sections that might still be on the limbs. And finally sanding. I'm not going to bore you with sanding, you know the drill. Coarse, medium, fine, medium, fine, and then a coat of oil. It's important that the front of your bow be well sanded. Any rough sections are a potential weakness. And now here we have the finished product. It looks pretty good, but you can never tell with a bow until you string it whether or not it's just going to blow up. Moment of truth. Bloody heck, this is hard to string. I think maybe I should have made it a little bit weaker. Well, let's pass the first test. Looking at it now that it's strung, I can see a few sections that I should have tillered a little bit better, but it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty good. Let's see how it shoots. For starters, I can't draw it all the way. The arrows travel significantly faster than they do for my other bows. Man, is it ever hard on my arm. <laughs> Set up my old bloody injury again, but whatever. It shoots a little bit to the left, but I can compensate for that. I can't accurately estimate the power of this. The most powerful measured bow I've shot was 50 pounds, but I was 16 when I did that. It's well above 50, might even be above 60 or 70. Okay, time to stop before I pop my tendon. So, I'm pretty happy with that. I might end up scraping it down, make it a little bit lighter. As it stands, it's at the end of my strength just to string the bloody thing. Just one more thing before I conclude. These three bows here were all made using the same pattern. I like this pattern a lot. It's got a good success ratio and it gives nice results. Bow making isn't so difficult and it's not so sciencey as a lot of these people on the internet would have you believe. If you do decide to give it a try, don't be surprised or discouraged if your first couple of bows end in failure. The first three I ever made blew up pretty quickly. Anyway, that's just about all I have to say. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.